It's difficult to grow, not only because of radiation but also because of individual differences. Only a small amount is safe for consumption. The rest is extracted for nutrients. Zhang Chen understood that, and that was the reason he was here. Mr. Zhao guessed that the cans in the exchange house were the result of Zhang Chen's work. Zhang Chen just smiled. Mr. Zhao wanted Zhang Chen to know that he was also a businessman in Block 6. The style of his voice suggests that he did this to humiliate his guest. It seemed that if Mr. Zhou didn't offer something equivalent, he wouldn't be inclined to discuss it further. Zhang Chen explained that the boxes of canned food Mr. Zhao mentioned were actually the ones he sold to the exchange house for 50 crystals per box. He'd heard that they even valued them at 60 crystals per box. Mr. Zhou knew what Zhang Chen was talking about, and since he was in the inner circle, and not the outer circle exchange house, he was interested in doing a bigger business deal. And he wanted not just a one-time deal but multiple deals. Mr. Zhao would like to reintroduce himself. He is a member of Committee 10, the president of the Zhao Group, Zhao Chen Wu. On behalf of the Zhao Group, he is happy to welcome Zhang Chen's company to Block 6 to discuss how they can work together. Zhang Chen was very happy because the person he met was a member of Committee 10, and he got a big fish. He introduced himself as the owner of the Fishbone Food Production Company. He also said that as long as he appeared here, there must be an agreement to find a trading partner. Mr. Zhao was shocked to hear Zhang Chen's words. He didn't expect Zhang Chen to be able to provide canned food forever. Mr. Zhao wondered who Zhang Chen really was. Was it a foreign organization or was he just a con artist? But he didn't care. He had to get this business deal. Zhang Chen felt that Mr. Zhao was getting too excited. He asked him to sit down and discuss how they could work together. At first, Mr. Zhao thinks he's a regular reseller because the goods are more valuable now. But long-term exchanges were another matter. If he could really guarantee a stable source, it was beyond his imagination. The two of them finally left the place. There were several weapons with future technology lined up on the table. It turned out that Zhang Chen was trying out the weapon. It turned out to be a weapon produced by a company in District 6. The weapon used by Zhang Chen was a ripper snipper. It had better stabilizers than Zhang Chen's. He wanted to order 40 snippers. He wanted to order 40 snipper rippers and all the different hand grenades. Mr. Zhao agreed to Zhang Chen's request and asked him to sit down. Su Lei brought out their initial draft contract. It was based on the list of mandatory basic equipment she had specified yesterday, combined with the details of the exchange content. Su Lei asked Zhang Chen to review it. Anti-rust cement fusion equipment, Carbon nanotube generator artificial graphite field cutting machine there is no problem there. Chenano's weapon production equipment and machine tool production equipment are difficult to supply because they require full chain supply. Basically the price of food is as agreed before. Mr. Zhao also took Zhang Chen to see the production of weapons at his weapons factory. Mr. Zhao asked Zhang Chen, Isn't it enough to arm the businesses Zhang Chen mentioned yesterday? According to Mr. Zhao, why not set up directly inside Block 6? They will guarantee protection for Zhang Chen's industries. Zhang Chen said he had no choice. It was the company's order and he was just a representative. Secretary Su Lei asked him to make sure that there were no problems with registering the information here. President Zhao will go with him on the population issue and the details of the arms deal. After that, they went straight to visit his weapons factory. Mr. Zhao asked her to hold on tight. Then they went downstairs. According to Zhang Chen, being a counselor is not just a title. An arms factory like this cannot be built by one person. Mr. Zhao explains that this is their main production line, mostly responsible for ammunition and armor. Jiang Chen looked in amazement at what was there. Those are Dorn maglevs. Each one can carry up to 50 kilograms just like an integrated seeker, has a destructive function, and has an incredible individual weapon system. And this is all for civilian use. Mr. Zhao wants to show another weapons production site. He also asked Zhang Chen to wear sunglasses. This is the place for weapons testing. Before being sold to consumers, all weapons in this factory will be tested first. Zhang Chen is very interested in automatic weapons like this. If it's not too much trouble, he wants Mr. Zhao to sell him some of these automatic weapons. For Mr. Zhao, it's no problem, and he will prepare them for Zhang Chen. But this result is low now block 6, is still upgrading the checkpoint equipment again. Orders have been piling up for two months. Hopefully Zhang Chen will be willing to wait. Zhang Chen is fine with waiting for two months. Then they continue to tour the factory. 
This is the workshop for installing reconnaissance robots. The spider artillery tanks are triangular. Jiang Chen probably saw some when he entered the city. This time, he got a real look at the armed forces of the future. But this can't be all there is if all humans have this much power. But they are still in the suburbs and there is no way to deal with zombies and abnormalities. How strong are all the monsters in this world? Mr. Zhao felt that Jiang Chen was working abroad and had already faced many dangers. Mr. Zhao gave Jiang Chen the nitrogen armor as a gift. The nitrogen is pulled into the center using an atomic vortex to cause high-pressure circulation. Someone is trying on the nitrogen armor. Once activated, it will create a protective barrier around the body of the person wearing it and can block all shots. Before the energy runs out at its highest performance, it can withstand the attack of four machine guns. This is practical protective energy. Mr. Zhou asked Zhang Chen what he thought of the nitrogen armor. Zhang Chen said he really liked the armor, but he asked if it had any limitations. It's not that big. It's just that the energy consumption is high and the problem of the core overheating is still unsolved. One crystal would probably give one minute of use, but it started to heat up when using it for 10 seconds straight. After a few uses, the crystal usage will equal the cost of production. Zhang Chen didn't expect Mr. Zhou to have the ability to develop weapons. They don't sell very well. Not many people can use them. Then Mr. Zhou took him to the next stop. One day in the post-apocalypse world in a certain refugee shelter, there were two capsules. An old man and his wife woke up from the capsules. He was a senior mechanical engineer before the war. He had the opportunity to enter to enjoy the hibernation room next to his family. Too bad the world after the war wasn't as great as they imagined. Most refugee shelters were forcibly opened. Their property became the property of bandits, and those in the hibernation room became goods. Those who refused to be led like sheep to the slaughter. There are those who are fortunate to be friends to hurt their brothers. There are those who become victims when others turn over a new leaf. All of them who were kidnapped by the bandits were goods. They were sold to the place where goods go. That place was Block 6. The man was categorized as someone who had work value and he got a job. Frankly, the funny thing is that he didn't get it because he was a senior engineer, but because he looked fit to work hard. He became an assembly line worker. But there was something to celebrate a few weeks later, his wife was also sold to Block 6. They were lucky to meet in the future like this. What happened next happened today. Thirty people, including him, were called in for what they call a ruined quarantine. This kind of thing happens before. It's called quarantine. The truth is every single one of them will be tagged with symptoms of the X1 infection and sent outside. They would end up as someone's personal guard or as material for human experimentation. To fight back? From the moment they entered Block 6, it should have been from the moment they left the hibernation chamber. Their lives were no longer their own. But looking at who was taken today, the man was surprised to see that there were women who would be personal soldiers. He thought only men would be personal soldiers, and how could his wife be chosen? And now they were loaded onto the truck. He honestly wasn't sure what awaited them. There seemed to be other families besides them on the truck, but those who had been chosen were mostly powerful people. There were also a few people like him who had skills in high-tech warfare, but were now considered useless. The man still didn't know where the bandits would take them. The truck stopped somewhere. It turns out that there are Jiang Chen, Sun Zhou, and Yao Yao who are preparing food. Jiang Chen said they must have had a rough trip and asked them to get off to eat. The man didn't expect it. Until today, he never believed he could smell the fragrant smell of rice again. Jiang Chen immediately told them to eat. They couldn't believe it and thought it was all a dream. Some of them were afraid of being experimented on, but others didn't care if they were experimented on as long as they could eat. They finally cooed up to get food. Jiang Chen distributed the food to them one by one. They ate very well, and the food tasted very good. They were very grateful and Jiang Chen said not to worry because everyone would get food, and if they weren't full they could ask for more. Jiang Chen also joked with them to make the atmosphere warmer. Jiang Chen will not let them starve, especially since they have never seen rice in this post-apocalypse world. Jiang Chen used one kilo of rice, two pieces of dried meat, and three cabbages for this meal. Some Jiao seemed to be grumbling because Jiang Chen took some food from the cellar in exchange for materials. But this didn't even cost that much. No big deal when he could have taken another pile. They finish eating, then Jiang Chen asks Sun Zhou to do business. 
Sun Zhao is very upset with Zhang Chen because he didn't listen to him. Meanwhile, Yo Yo asks Sun Zhou to bring all these bowls and chopsticks into the house. Zhang Chen went to the slaves. He asked them if they had Qiang. But they were silent like they were afraid Zhang Chen would do something bad. But if they wanted to get more food tomorrow, they had to answer all his questions honestly. They finally answered that they were full. Zhang Chen thought they might have guessed what kind of situation they were in. He had to stop them from starving for now, and he will give you wealth beyond your wildest dreams. He asked them all to prove it to him. Prove that they deserve to eat three meals a day. With the work finally done, Zhang Chen returned to his room and went straight to rest, because it had been a long day. He still has a lot of work to do. But it didn't matter, at least the headquarters expansion and game development were taken care of. And there were even people who could cook. It seemed like he had a high opinion of the people he brought over from Mr. Zhao. But speaking of his biggest catch, he still needs to calculate this. Zhang Chen also took out the gold he brought from the post-apocalypse world, and it was a lot. Then his cell phone rang, it looked like someone was calling him. As expected his cell phone went into his pocket, but probably most of these messages were from Xia. Zhang Chen immediately picked up the phone, and it turned out to be a call from Xia, and she sounded very angry with Zhang Chen. She doesn't seem to have the peace of mind to take care of it anymore, it's also time to say goodbye to this place. Zhang Chen said Xia could have rented it out to someone else. Then he immediately turned off Xia's phone. He was curious about Xia and wanted to call her again to make her even more angry and upset with him. Xia's phone rang. She was very upset because it was Zhang Chen's phone call. Zhang Chen had disappeared for a long time and was still remembering how to call back. Xia finally picked up the phone from him. In a sarcastic tone, Xia said the leader of her company really called her back. Laughing, Jiang Chen said, isn't business the right thing to be busy these days? It was very upset with Jiang Chen's words. Because she had turned off her cell phone. He should understand that the company is still in the growth stage. Then what about the deployment of business direction? This is her company or Xia's company. She felt Xia was still very fierce, but Jiang Chen asked Xia not to think about that first because there were more important things to do. She asked Xia to come with her to see the house. But Xia immediately turned off the phone. Jiang Chen called her back and Xia was very upset about it. Even though she was very upset, she was still the boss. He asked Xia not to hang up. Jiang Chen asked Xia to be able to accompany him. Xia also asked what it had to do with him if Jiang Chen bought a house. Jiang Chen just wants Xia to be able to accompany him. Then he told her that he had almost completed the development of his cell phone game. They can think of perfect game development. Next is to hire some experts. Xia was better at it, but if Xia wanted Jiang Chen to go alone to the job market, she didn't mind either. Xia simply replied fine. To prevent her boss from playing hockey, Xia was obliged to agree to the usual demands of the job. She would collect various house prices and conditions. After that, Xia immediately hung up the phone. Finally, the matter was resolved, as Jiang Chen couldn't stand the ramblings of the house offer. But speaking of that, in this city, only one person who can handle that kind of thing is Xia. Jiang Chen was thinking what else he should do, and he remembered gold bars. This is the time for him to trouble his foreign friend. He immediately called Robert. But Robert never picked up the phone. It was my time here, so if you counted the time difference, he shouldn't be sleeping. Robert finally picked up the phone and said who was calling him. Jiang Chen said it was his Chinese friend. Jiang Chen asked who was talking to him. It turned out to be Nick. He said that his boss was in trouble and Nick seemed to want to ask Zhang Chen for help. Zhang Chen finally remembered that Nick was Robert's bodyguard. He said that they hadn't finished their business until now. He also put the phone down. It turned out that Robert was kidnapped. He entered the terrorist headquarters to do business, but he was sold by his informant. Zhang Chen thought very hard about what he should do now. He couldn't possibly sell that much gold himself, which was worth almost 5 billion US dollars. He really didn't want to be targeted by secret agents. If they found out anything, it would be bad from all aspects. Should he travel there to save Robert? Jane Chen finally got an idea. It seemed like he could, and he had already gotten a passport from the university. Then if he could control his body and the equipment he brought from there. He was invincible. If it became dangerous, he could hide in a remote area for a few days. He would do that. First, he would prepare a little money. A few tons of gold was too much. So one or two kilograms of gold would be fine. 
Jiang Chen called Mr. Liu and said he had some business for him tomorrow. The next day, he came to the gold shop to sell the gold he had brought. After completing the transaction, Jiang Chen left the store immediately. Mr. Liu looked very happy with Jiang Chen's arrival. Tung Liu felt that there was something with Jiang Chen, just as he had predicted. Then he picked up his phone and called someone. Mr. Liu asked that person to spy on Jiang Chen. Because Mr. Liu had already found out information about Jiang Chen, he had no identity, no background, he was just a small officer. After the last exchange, Jiang Chen spent it all quickly. It didn't take too long and he came away with 7 kilograms of gold. Tomb looters, private mines, after all this boy must have more than this small amount. Gang Hong Yu, the person who was talking to Master Liu, will catch Jiang Chen and won't let him down. Mr. Liu turns off his phone and he seems happy to commit an act of evil against Jiang Chen. Someone was handing out food. It turned out to be the villain who had kidnapped Robert. The villain said that if Robert didn't eat, then he would die. Robert has businesses in various international industries, but three days ago, during the exchange of information, he sold it. Now he is inside the terrorist stronghold. Those unlucky people over there may be dragged in to be tortured and filmed. If they had no identity or were useless, most of them were slaughtered. Robert wasn't too scared, especially since it wasn't the first time this had happened to him. The last time he was caught, his throat was almost cut, for which the mercenary received money. But now the situation was a little dire. Although he was still a citizen of a certain country, and the business he had been doing for the past few years was in line with international interests. But in the last two years, he had probably been targeted for smuggling crude oil. He wasn't sure that the informant's betrayal wasn't just part of the group's trickery. But Robert felt sorry for Nick. If he hadn't been caught, he wouldn't have fallen into such a difficult situation. This was all because of that damn informer. And no matter how Nick thought about it, he was only one person. Finally, Robert was kidnapped and taken away by the criminals. Nick was still trying to fight the terrorists. But dealing with the whole group of terrorists was a bit useless. This time, Robert still trusted his feelings. He had to stay safe. But speaking of that, this bread was really hard to eat. Jiang Chen had finally arrived at the airport, and it still looked quite peaceful. He found a taxi and asked to be taken to the place he showed on the map. Jiang Chen asked the taxi driver why there was no one around. A peaceful world is not something simple to ask for. Don't mention it, this isn't all because of the war, even though it's peaceful for now. There's no guarantee there won't be a sudden attack. When Jiang Chen got out of the car, he was greeted by Nick. Then he tipped the taxi driver. Nick asked if Jiang had come alone. Jiang Chen replied yes. According to Nick, although Jiang Chen was good at fighting, it would be difficult with just the two of them. Jiang Chen immediately took Nick away and asked if he got directions from Robert. Nick already knows the location, the situation is not good. Yesterday they killed a reporter. He will not explain the details, in short the only ones who can act are the two of them. Jiang Chen told Nick to be more relaxed and asked if he had prepared a good weapon. It's already prepared by Nick and is in the back. Nick asked if Jiang Chen needed a weapon. Jiang Chen said no, he came prepared. Then they left. Finally, they had arrived at the terrorist base. Their fort is right next to the car. Nick asks Jiang Chen to be careful not to get caught by them. Nick also asked Jiang Chen to prepare for battle. A man is observing Jiang Chen. He thinks she looks stronger and will not be a heavy burden for him. He thinks bringing Jiang Chen here was a big mistake. Jiang Chen says that the people here are sensitive enough for war. The man has something to say to Jiang Chen. He said that Chinese Kung Fu wouldn't serve him well here. And he asked Jiang Chen if he was okay if it was like this. Jiang Chen felt that the man thought all Chinese people must be good at Kung Fu. Then Jiang Chen took something from behind his body, and it was a gun. He showed the gun to the man and his preparations were complete, so he asked the man to leave immediately. The man was surprised where Jiang Chen got the gun from and he didn't think someone like Jiang Chen could have a gun. Jiang Chen asked if this was really the place, and he wanted the man not to worry about him. Then Jiang Chen took out the tool from Yao Yo's research and wanted to try it. It turned out to be a drone that had a green shield. Jiang Chen wanted to see how many people were in the building using the drone. The man was confused about what object Jiang Chen was using. From the results of the drone monitoring, three people on the first floor had weapons, Five people on the second floor had weapons and six people were underground, but three of them did not have weapons. Jiang Chen told Nick to maintain the evacuation point here. 
Zhang Chen was able to handle the people inside the building. Zhang Chen felt he was fast, but fast, and it would be quieter if he moved alone. Nick agreed to Zhang Chen's wishes. He entrusted his boss to Zhang Chen and would guard this place. Finally, Zhang Chen entered the building alone. Inside the building, the criminals were playing cards, and there was someone who asked permission to go to the toilet. It turned out that Jiang Chen wanted to enter the building through the top floor. Before entering, Jiang Chen monitored the surroundings. He thought this genetic medicine was worth every penny. Jiang Chen opened the door slowly and leaned against the wall while holding his gun. Jiang Chen saw only one person in the bathroom. Then he shot the criminal while he was whistling. The first criminal was dead. One of the criminals suspected why his friend had been in the bathroom for so long and hadn't returned. He went to the bathroom to see his friend. Meanwhile, the other villain was still busy playing cards. The villain knocked on the door and called his friend. He asked why he had been in the bathroom for so long and hadn't come out. When the criminal entered the bathroom, Zhang Chen shot him from above, where he was hiding. Zhang Chen will continue his action to hunt down the criminals, because there are still three more criminals left to kill. Zhang Chen went downstairs. There were three people playing cards. One of them threatened that if they called him a loser, then he would shoot his two friends. Hearing this, Jiang Chen happily helped the villain to shoot them all. One of the criminals felt that someone was watching him. But very quickly, Jiang Chen shot all three of them. The criminals underground heard the sound of someone falling. The criminal felt that something was wrong on the first floor and told his friend to get a gun. Then the criminal asked his friend to follow him upstairs. Jiang Chen hid behind the wall and was waiting for the right moment to kill the criminal. After a while and the villain began to approach him, Zhang Chen immediately attacked the villain with several shots. Seeing his captain shot dead, the two criminals immediately opened fire on the place where Zhang Chen was brutally. He said the target was in the second floor corridor, telling his friend to concentrate his fire there. Zhang Chen was cornered because there were many people there who were shooting at him. At the same time underground, there was someone sitting down in a guard. The man heard the shots, and he wondered if they had come to rescue the hostage. One criminal told his friend to keep an eye on the prisoner. He will go upstairs to help his partner. The villain in the room was nervous why he was left alone to watch the prisoners. He felt something was wrong with this situation. The villain was very upset that there were so many of them, but why were they not used to giving in to this one person? Jiang Chen went downstairs while singing. Finally, Jiang Chen found the place where the hostages were held. Then Jiang Chen opened the door. After entering, he greeted Mr. Robert, who was being held there. Mr. Robert did not expect it to be Zhang Chen who saved him, and the remaining villain was afraid to see Zhang Chen, he spoke something but his speech was unclear. Zhang Chen didn't understand what the villain was saying. According to Mr. Robert, the villain told Zhang Chen to drop his weapon, or he would kill the hostage. The villain told Zhang Chen to drop his weapon immediately. Zhang Chen said if he wanted to threaten someone he had to choose the right hostage. Jiang Chen didn't plan to save the hostage, but the hostage's life was in his hands and someone nearby might be his family. According to Jiang Chen, saving someone's life was more important than building a seven-story temple. Then Jiang Chen gave up and was about to drop his gun. After Jiang Chen put down his gun, the villain shot him immediately. After finishing shooting Jiang Chen, the villain immediately released his hostage. He also approached Jiang Chen to see if Jiang Chen was dead or not. When the villain approached, Jiang Chen immediately shot him and said goodbye. Mr. Robert was very happy to meet Zhang Chen. He was so amazed by Zhang Chen that he thought Chinese Kung Fu was so extraordinary that it could dodge bullets. Actually, Jiang Chen managed to withstand the bullet because he turned on the shield. Then he pretended to fall until the villain released the hostage. Then he took out his gun and shot the villain. Nick spoke to Zhang Chen, telling him to quickly get out of the building because the reinforcements were almost there. Jiang Chen also invited Mr. Robert to leave immediately because Nick was waiting above. Nick had just had a shootout with the criminals and he had been caught. But there was not a single criminal at the evacuation point. Nick told Jiang Chen and Mr. Robert to immediately go start the car. Nick also turned off his cell phone because a criminal appeared. Nick immediately shot at the criminal. Jiang Chen and Mr. Robert ran out of the building, but Mr. Robert felt that they were running towards the villain. Zhang Chen suddenly pulled Mr. Robert's shirt collar to hide. Then some villains appeared looking for them. Zhang Chen searched for a way to escape using the drone and they almost reached the evacuation point. Nick was shot in the arm. Zhang Chen told Nick how many they had in the car and told Nick to come immediately. Nick tore off part of his shirt and tied his wounded hand with the torn shirt. 
Nick was in the camper and told Zhang Chen and Mr. River to leave. Nick felt he should have died a long time ago, but today he wouldn't let that happen. While in the shooting suit, Zhang Chen tells Nick the way to escape. Nick couldn't just leave because the enemy kept shooting at him. The criminals kept shooting at Nick and wouldn't let him escape. Zhang Chen guided Nick to get away from there secretly. Finally, Nick reached the evacuation point. He did not expect to get out of there alive. Mr. Robert also asked if they had managed to escape, but Zhang Chen replied that they had not. Zhang Chen explained that they were not out of the forest yet and the criminals must have blocked the way out. Zhang Chen still hadn't found a way out of there. They immediately rushed to leave by car because more and more reinforcements were coming. Then Zhang Chen said to go to the desert if successful we will reach a safe city. Mr. Roberts said if there was enough gasoline for them to escape through the desert and turn around the north side. If they were lucky that place should be controlled by the government military. In other words, the place where Zhang Chen rescued Mr. Robert could be under terrorist control. If Zhang Chen knew it was going to be like this, he probably wouldn't have saved Mr. Robert, but it didn't matter anymore since they had already escaped from there. Besides, Zhang Chen was able to test the equipment for Yao Yao, and it performed quite well. But there was something unexpected, Zhang Chen no longer felt anxious to kill people. Or maybe it's because the people he kills are the bad guys. They stop in the middle of the desert, there was a problem in their car. When Nick opened the hood, thick smoke came out of the car engine. Mr. Robert, if the car engine dies, then they are over. Zhang Chen felt they were always running towards all the problems. The car couldn't start even though they had tried to fix it for half a day. Zhang Chen wanted to use the maglev suspension to take them home. The maglev suspension was an item made by Yao Yao. But if this wasn't their final resting place, he didn't want to show it. Suddenly a car came towards them. Nick thought the car was a criminal, but Mr. Robert held him back. Mr. Robert was very happy and told Nick to keep his gun and he said that they were safe. Mr. Robert ran straight to the car and called someone who got out of the car. According to Zhang Chen, they were a group of refugees. Mr. Robert was talking to one of them. The driver of the car agreed to give them a ride. It was common for them to help each other in this desert. In return, they asked for some of the water that Zhang Chen had and Zhang Chen agreed to the driver's request. Then Zhang Chen rushed to get gasoline out of his car and asked Nick to help him. Finally, they left. Zhang Chen told Nick that Mr. Robert got along well with them so they could get a ride. Zhang Chen also asked Nick if Mr. Robert could speak many languages and Nick said yes. The little boy next to Zhang Chen was confused to see Zhang Chen and Nick talking because he didn't know the language they spoke. Zhang Chen asked Nick if these refugees might be fleeing the war because of terrorists. Nick agreed. The little boy felt that Zhang Chen and Nick were not like other people. Zhang Chen again asked Nick if they could speak English. Nick was silent and did not answer Zhang Chen's question. The little boy was annoyed with Zhang Chen because Zhang Chen kept talking. It turned out that Nick was asleep and according to the little boy, Nick was really amazing. Zhang Chen felt that he was in a bad situation because there is one Chinese person and one injured person. The atmosphere was not good from the moment they boarded because everyone inside kept staring at Zhang Chen. They stopped for lunch. Zhang Chen was busy eating the food he brought. Luckily, he had a storage dimension so he could carry food. Zhang Chen felt that the food he brought was a little different. While eating, he also remembered what he had gone through. Half a year ago, he was someone who was worried about work, and today he was in the desert. Zhang Chen remembered that he hadn't called his parents in a long time. There was a little boy who saw Zhang Chen. Zhang Chen realized the little boy was looking at him, and when he saw him, the little boy immediately turned away. Zhang Chen also pretended not to realize that he was being seen by the little boy. Zhang Chen tried to look at the little boy, but he turned away again. When the little boy wanted to see Zhang Chen, he was surprised that Zhang Chen disappeared. Suddenly, Zhang Chen appeared behind the little boy and greeted him. The boy was surprised to see Zhang Chen behind him and Zhang Chen introduced himself and said he was from China. The child also introduced herself and said her name was Asia. Zhang Chen shamelessly sat in front of Asia and thought the little boy's name was very beautiful. Zhang Chen gave the food he brought for Aisha. Aisha also thought it was food from China. Aisha was very happy and thanked Zhang Chen. Zhang Chen always had a lot of snacks because he prepared them to please Sun Zhou. Aisha also tried the food given by Zhang Chen. It seemed like Aisha had been hungry for a long time. She was about 16 to 17 years old. Zhang Chen didn't see anyone with her. 
Seeing her like that, Zhang Chen felt that he shouldn't discuss anything related to the family. Zhang Chen asked Aisha if she had decided what she would do when she reached the next town. After hearing Zhang Chen's words, Aisha fell silent and stopped eating. Aisha didn't answer that she didn't have a plan. She would go to the local refugee camp to receive humanitarian aid. Then she will look for a man who is willing to buy her. Aisha said that she was a virgin. There should be no problem. Zhang Chen didn't expect the conversation to lead to such a heavy topic. At this moment, Zhang Chen chose to remain silent. In the car, Mr. Robert was talking to his friend. In America, Mr. Robert owns a fairly large company. Mr. Robert likes his ability. If he wants, Mr. Robert wants him to be his driver. Mr. Robert said, don't worry about the green card. He has a close relationship with Congress. Smiling, his friend said if Mr. Robert didn't joke, he would get into trouble. Suddenly, the car they were driving was attacked. Aisha almost bounced out of the car, but was immediately saved by Zhang Chen and told Aisha to hold her hand tightly. Two cars came towards them. Someone got out of the car and told his friends to take their weapons and move quickly. Mr. Robert was in pain from the attack, and he didn't know what happened. Suddenly, Mr. Robert's collar was pulled, and he was thrown out of the car. The villain ordered his men to put Mr. Robert in the car, and they would demand a ransom for him. Then the villain ordered his troops to check the back of the car. Zhang Chen asked Aisha who they were, whether they were criminals who captured slaves. They are criminals often in the desert and countryside. The women they capture will become sex slaves. They force the men to join them. If they refuse, they will kill them. If possible, Aisha wanted to maintain her chastity. Then Aisha asked Zhang Chen for some bullets. The people in the car were scared and crying. They didn't want to die in a place like this and didn't want to die at the hands of those criminals. Zhang Chen replied to Aisha that he didn't have any. Aisha was surprised to hear Zhang Chen's answer. Then she could only pray for Zhang Chen. One of them fired his gun upwards and said, It's harvest time. He told his brother to pick first. He said, How many people can we gather this month? We still haven't gotten anything good. His sister told him not to be too hasty. We will never know what will happen. When he wanted to open the curtain of the car, suddenly the two criminals were immediately ambushed by Zhang Chen and Nick. After successfully killing them, Zhang Chen will save Mr. Robert, and he told Nick to take care of the back of the car, and told him to be careful of machine guns. Then they left, Zhang Chen immediately shot two criminals who were around the car. Hearing the sound of gunfire, the villain released Mr. Robert and shouted that there were rebels, then ordered his troops to kill them. The criminals mocked Zhang Chen and called him stupid for attacking alone. But the villains immediately panicked when they saw what was in front of them, and Zhang Chen just smiled and laughed at them. It turns out that Zhang Chen used the protector made by Yao Yao so that the bullets that shot him all bounced off. We see who will die and Zhang Chen calls the criminals a bunch of trash. The criminals ran out of machine gun bullets, and his shots couldn't penetrate the armor Zhang Chen was using. One of them ordered to drag the white shirt to be used as a hostage. Suddenly, Mr. Robert appeared from behind the car and shot one of the criminals. The other criminals were surprised why Mr. Robert was there. When his attention was distracted, Jane Chen hit the villain. Nick asked Mr. Robert if he was okay. Mr. Robert felt pain in his back and asked if everything was taken care of. While walking, Mr. Robert shot at the dead criminals. Nick asked Mr. Robert what they should do. Because the remaining gasoline was only enough for 200 km. They had to walk all the way, and there was no other way. Zhang Chen was worried about the refugees. Zhang Chen was surprised that Nick and Mr. Robert looked at him sarcastically, because Zhang Chen was still worried about the refugees, even though they were also almost killed by the villain's attack earlier. The terrorist patrol seems to end here. As in the next city, they will be free. Regarding humanitarian issues, leave it to the people who have problems. They shouldn't be there. With enough gasoline, Zhang Chen could go to the farthest safe zone. It was enough to inform them of the danger ahead. If they all left, they would be a big target. Zhang Chen continued on his way. The desert was very quiet. There were no criminals, thieves, stray bullets, or even desert storms. Except for Aisha, they got an extra passenger. And the reason why Aisha finally came with Zhang Chen. Mr. Robert was talking to the refugees. Zhang Chen invited Mr. Robert to leave immediately because he had explained everything to the refugees. Suddenly, Aisha pulled Zhang Chen's shirt. Aisha wanted to speak to Zhang Chen, but she was embarrassed. Nervously, Aisha spoke in Arabic. But Zhang Chen didn't understand and asked Mr. Robert to translate. While laughing, Mr. Robert smiled embarrassedly at Aisha's words. 
Jiang Chen again told Mr. Robert that he didn't understand Aisha's words, but Mr. Robert told Jiang Chen to take care of it himself. Jiang Chen thought that Aisha was hungry. Then he gave some food to Aisha, but Aisha refused. Aisha asked Jiang Chen to take her. Jiang Chen was confused whether Aisha had no family so asked him to bring Aisha. Jiang Chen also remembered Aisha's words about her plan. Jiang Chen finally agreed to it, but he couldn't do more. First, he needed to make sure Aisha went to a safe place. Just like what Robert said, let the compassion overflow once. But Aisha thought she was rejected by Zhang Chen and felt she was just a burden to Zhang Chen. But Zhang Chen invited Aisha into the car, and Aisha looked very happy. That's the story of how Aisha can come with Zhang Chen. Zhang Chen was curious about what Aisha said to him before getting into the car. Then Robert explained to him, I should pray to God that if you could punish the devil who used his kindness to do evil, then even though you are a pagan Aisha is willing to be a git from the desert for him and become his wife, Aisha would be meek as a camel and follow him. Robert had to translate into English and then into Mandarin. But that's basically what it meant. Robert asked what Jiang Chen thought. In America, there were some cities that allowed men to have multiple wives. Why didn't Jiang Chen think about it? Jiang Chen just kept silent, unable to answer Robert's words. Then Jiang Chen said that he didn't have a wife. Robert also teased Jiang Chen. There was a woman who wanted him who sat quietly in the back seat. This is really a difficult situation for Jiang Chen. Jiang Chen will bring Aisha home. For the visa problem, Jiang Chen will bribe someone who can help him to clear up the problem. But doing good things will get good karma too. They arrived in a city and a helicopter was about to land. Eventually, they returned to the American National Headquarters. Robert asked Nick if there was anyone they knew. Nick said that Robert was also from America. Aisha wondered what they were doing there. This trip will take a long time. Jiang Chen wondered how things were going there. Robert was talking to someone who got off the helicopter. Jiang Chen calmed Aisha down and said that this place was safe. We're just waiting for Robert to take care of something then we'll leave. It seems that civilians from war zones don't deal well with Interpol. That Robert person, Jiang Chen, really didn't think that the person who came to save him. Then that person came up to Jiang Chen and greeted him. And it turns out that the person is Blues. Jiang Chen asked what he was doing here. Blues explained that he was a mercenary and whoever paid was his boss. That means Blues has something to do with the reason Jiang Chen came all the way from China. Blues said that he was only responsible for the security of his current boss. That man was Lawrence Orden, a detective from America. Their business was with Robert. It must be because he touched the bottom line of national interest. Once he was trapped, they pulled out a rescue op for a few days. If he dies, they get the money. If not, they would find a new interesting person to trade. Jiang Chen asked if it was okay that he told him all this information. Blues asked Jiang Chen if Nick didn't explain anything to her about this. Nick didn't explain anything to him. He only told him when Jiang Chen could act. Nick also didn't tell him what would happen after saving his boss, and they also rarely spoke. Boss Blues asked not to divulge personal information to unrelated strangers. He also told the Blues to return to headquarters as soon as possible. Blues also said goodbye to Zhang Chen, and he said that his boss was indeed an unfriendly person. Zhang Chen did not expect to cross paths with Blues. Blues is a mercenary whoever pays is the boss. This time the boss will soon be promoted. Jiang Chen asked if he was promoted because of the agreement with Robert. It could be like that, in order to prevent special circumstances, doing an arms deal in a sensitive area might urge some people. For example, if Robert happened to install a GPS on a bomb. Where would this bomb go? He will leave it to your imagination. Jiang Chen understood the meaning of Robert's words, meaning that they depended on Robert to track the terrorists. It was just a deal to cover Robert's crude oil deal all along but for Lawrence it would be a piece of work. Maybe now they were busy figuring out how to blow up that terrorist nest. Forget about this damn government guy. Let's go for a drink, and Robert will treat. My name is Aisha. I am 17 years old. I was born in a war-torn country. When Aisha was a child through TV, she came to understand a little about life in other countries. The first time Aisha thought it was filled with greenery, asphalt with clean roads and peaceful life. What people dream of for the future. That something is called a movie. Then Aisha discovered her life was a movie. This is one movie where people live peacefully by acting on their violent habits. They live with their own reality, and the movie's life is another ego. Then because her mother refused the demon's unreasonable request, 
Both her parents were killed by the terrorists. And just like her siblings, Aisha was exiled, fleeing the war, trying to survive until she met Zhang Chen. Then he exterminates the demons who use the name of God to commit crimes. He saved her dying from humiliation. He didn't reject her even though he had long forgotten what it was like not to be tainted and brought her along. And now it was time for Aisha to repay her debt of gratitude to Zhang Chen. Zhang Chen's whole body was sweaty, and Aisha wanted to clean his body. While asleep, Zhang Chen was delirious. When Aisha wanted to clean Zhang Chen's body, suddenly Zhang Chen held Aisha's hand, pulled her, and kissed her directly. At that moment, Aisha felt like melting in his arms. If this was God's will, Aisha thought this was the greatest grace he had ever given. And Aisha wanted to be an obedient camel in Zhang Chen's arms and serve him with this life. Now Zhang Chen was sitting on the plane traveling to China, and there was Aisha sitting next to him. Zhang Chen's dirty thoughts appeared as he remembered something and looked at Aisha. Zhang Chen started sweating. Zhang Chen looked emotional because of Aisha's words that said she would learn Mandarin. Aisha also woke up. Zhang Chen felt ashamed of himself and his behavior like an animal. Aisha embraced Zhang Chen and said that he was her little camel. That day, there were several cars coming to Zhang Chen, and it turned out that the one in the car was Nick. Zhang Chen told Nick that he wanted to thank Robert for helping him to take care of Aisha's passport problem. Robert gave a message to Zhang Chen if this money was nothing compared to their agreement. Zhang asked Nick who the person who came with him was. Nick introduced him. He was Mr. Zhang. He is temporarily responsible for his security. Zhang introduced himself to Zhang Chen. He is a businessman who runs maritime trade in Shanghai City, and his boss has a business agreement with Robert. Not once on the trip had Zhang seen Nick talking and laughing with anyone like that. We can see this is the longest conversation Zhang has ever heard Nick talk. Zhang also knew that Nick said he was assigned to be his bodyguard, but he was actually taking care of this deal. Because all of Robert's important bodyguards had been used to take care of this, and the content of this deal was not very simple. Zhang was just an insider tasked to bring goods into international waters. It was very simple. Little did Zhang know it would be safer for him. Zhang Chen invited Nick and Zhang to enter the warehouse because the goods were in there. But Zhang refused he would stand guard outside and tell Nick to check the goods. Later Zhang's people will take care of transporting the goods. Then Zhang Chen and Nick went straight to the warehouse. When inside Nick couldn't believe what was in this warehouse. Nick thought that this warehouse was just their meeting place, but Zhang Chen really kept his gold here. In China, there is an old saying, hide something big in the city. If you ask the security guards to keep an eye on it, it will be targeted by thieves. Actually, Zhang Chen was stingy. He used the warehouse to sell food in the future, which was temporarily used to store gold. Then Zhang Chen told them to come in. When Nick pulled the cloth, there was a pile of gold bars that were very large and shining. Nick and his colleagues were shocked by the amount of gold in the warehouse. Zhang Chen said not to be surprised yet, because there was still a lot of gold in the back. They puked silently at the sight of that much gold. According to Zhang Chen, it was a normal response. When Zhang Chen first saw Sun Zhao fill the swimming pool with gold, his reaction was the same. Then, Nick immediately told his partner to transport all the gold. The total weight of the gold was 11 tons and 240 kilograms. According to the average American gold exchange rate of the last seven days, minus 9% handling fee, Jiang Chen would receive 510 million US dollars. When Jiang Chen had checked the payment, Nick would tell them to start loading it into the car. Jiang Chen couldn't believe the money he was going to get. He asked Nick again to make sure. Then a notification sound appeared on Jiang Chen's cell phone. It was a notification that 510 million dollars had entered his account. After all the processes, work completed Zhang Chen and Nick shook hands and hoped that someday they could meet again. They immediately rushed away. Zhang Chen was very happy to get that much money. Zhang Chen remembered back when he was talking to Robert. According to Zhang Chen, this was nothing. This might be the last gold. When Zhang Chen had spent it, he needed to change careers. Robert asked Zhang Chen what he wanted to change his career to, and Zhang Chen replied high-tech. He thinks life is too risky. For Zhang Chen, this was not enough and still not enough. $510 million won't even be a fraction of the market value of future technology. Zhang Chen's cell phone rang and he picked up the phone. It turned out to be a call from Xia Xiu. He asked Zhang Chen to meet him immediately. Half an hour later, Zhang Chen arrived at Xiu Xiu's apartment. 
Kisa Xiu remembered when Zhang Chen threw a USB to her in the past. Zhang Chen also remembered it. He had already found someone to make cell phone games. Zhang Chen told Xia Xiu to look at the USB he gave her because there was an example of the cell phone game they were planning. Zhang Chen has business to complete. He is going to the Middle East and the rest will be given to Xia Xiu to take care of. Zhang Chen left the game server at Xia Xiu's door and hurried away. Zhang Chen asked if there were any problems with the game. Xia Xiu looked very excited. She thought the person who designed this game was a genius. No matter which aspect, there is nothing to doubt. Cloud computing not only lowers software requirements, but it also reduces bottlenecks. If the online quality of the game matches, this game will be a breakthrough great work in the history of mobile phone games. But this is Zhang Chen's company. Although Xia Xiu is responsible for all the work, there are many formalities and documents that require Zhang Chen's signature. If Zhang Chen continued to be absent without leave almost every day, leaving Xia Xiu to clean up the mess Zhang Chen made. And Zhang Chen felt this was the real problem. Zhang Chen said that Xia Xiu shouldn't worry he would get overtime pay. Next time if Zhang Chen has a need or something to discuss he can talk to Xia Xiu at the company or by phone, don't come to his house again. But it was Xia Xiu who told Zhang Chen to come to his house. Zhang Chen asked about the location of their company whether it had been determined. Xia Xiu told Zhang Chen about the location of the company and how the recruitment went when Zhang Chen came last time. Talking about the development of the company, Zhang Chen had submitted Xia Xiu had submitted a cell phone game for approval. The theme of the conversation is no sensitive issues, so Xia Xiu believes it won't be long before seeing the results. Another note, basically the renovation has been completed, plus the purchase of equipment and office rent for one year. The total is 70,000 Chinese yuan. The invoice has been handed over to the accountant and Zhang Chen can see the report. Xia Xiu made sure that the company maintained simple small actions and maintained work. Technical director, legal team, operational and sales staff. Salary employees buy necessary equipment. If we don't quickly find a way to secure profits, the company will go bankrupt. Zhang Chen said Xia Xiu must not know with his current economic strength. It would even be difficult if Xia Xiu wanted to go bankrupt. Xia Xiu was very upset with Zhang Chen, because he seemed to be joking when they were discussing his company. With a relaxed face, Zhang Chen said about the capital injection. Xia Xiu explains that they don't have the capital to guarantee a loan. Bank or any capital loan. They wouldn't lend us money that easily. Xia Xiu also asked how much capital Zhang Chen had prepared for the company's capital. Zhang Chen said that 10 million was enough. Xia Xiu didn't answer. Zhang Chen also said if it was not enough. How about a hundred million? Xia Xiu was annoyed and said that she wasn't in the mood to joke. Zhang Chen was not joking. Tomorrow Zhang Chen took Xia Xiu to the Exchange and Industry Bureau to go through the necessary procedures. Xia Xiu was silent again and Zhang Chen felt that she was scared. Xia Xiu asked Zhang Chen if he had so much money why he was making the company. Xia Xiu was silent again and she said if Zhang Chen was chasing her. Hearing Xia Xiu's words, Zhang Chen was very surprised and shocked. There was a bomb exploded, and the explosion was huge. Then, there was an airplane that crashed into a building and exploded. There was someone who was injured by the plane crash. The person on the plane was Chu Nan. He lost contact with his captain while on a routine task of collecting large crystals. Now he has woken up due to the heat of the explosion. More precisely, he didn't follow his captain's orders in time to evacuate from the vehicle. And he survived but his teammates were not so lucky. Chu Nan was very upset, because his communication device was cut off. Chu Nan was pretty sure it seemed like when he fainted there was a strong EMP attack, and caused his microchip to be disconnected. A microchip is a device used to access the optic nerve, which is used to communicate and use remote weapons. Chu Nan had to quickly organize the equipment. He started counting. First, he had a gun and five pieces of ammunition. Second, hematopoietic injections and B-level nutritional supplements. Those were the remaining items Chu Nan had, and he had to find his captain first. Chu Nan exited the plane and went down the stairs. The elevator was no longer working, but at least there weren't too many zombies upstairs. So Chu Nan could use the stairs to get down. When he got downstairs, Chu Nan saw a lot of zombies. And even though he was already downstairs, Chu Nan had wasted too much time, and now it was almost dark. Chunan had to find a base for the survivors or a safe place to stay. 
Then Chunan started killing one of the zombies nearby. Chunan sneaks behind the car, and he will utilize the time before sunset because the zombies will become slower. First, he had to leave the city center. When the war happened, everyone wanted to leave the city. This car should be facing the suburbs, and Shanann had to move fast. There was a woman tied to a pool. She was waiting for someone to come to her rescue, but no one came. The woman felt like night would soon fall. She had to endure a little longer. The woman was surrounded by zombies. While walking, Shanann saw something, so he stopped and immediately hid. It turned out that there was a woman who was tied to a pole, and she asked Shunan for help. Shunan was very upset why there were people who were so evil. Tying a woman to a pole surrounded by zombies. Shunan tried to save the woman, but he also had to be careful. Shunan told the woman not to be afraid of him because Shunan wanted to help her. Then Shunan cut the rope that tied the woman and said that the woman should not panic and she would be fine. After the rope was untied, the woman hugged Shunan and thanked him. With a shy face, Chunan said that the woman doesn't need to worry now she's fine. Chunan saw someone approaching him. Then that person pointed a gun at Chunan's head. The man mocked Chunan and said that he was the first stupid man to eat the bait this month. Then the woman Chunan saved took out a knife and put it to Chunan's neck. Because Chunan moved to help someone, he ended up falling into a trap. He was captured by a group of thugs. A man told his boss that he had examined Chunan and said that Shunan was a big catch. The man said that he got two hematopoietic injections, a roll of bandages and six tubes of level B nutritional supplements, as well as the equipment that Shunan was using. The man immediately praised the woman, saying she had done a good job. The woman was happy to be praised by him. The man wanted to see if she was really a big catch. Then he asked Shunan her name and where she was from. Shunan told him his name and he explained that he was an Air Force soldier from Bluting City. The man was surprised that Chunan revealed his identity, and he didn't expect that Chunan was an Air Force soldier from Looting City. The man thought that Chunan wanted to obstruct him. He also asked Chunan where Chunan's plane was, and Chunan replied that his plane had crashed into a building. The man was annoyed that Chunan acted like a high ranking and powerful person. Chunan said back that he was only interested in taking valuable equipment. He had already achieved his goal, and Chunan let him have the items. Then Chunan wanted him to let go and let her go. The man laughed as Chunan tried to bargain with him. The man pressed a lit cigarette to Chunan's cheek and told his friend to take her. He immediately took Chunan away from there. The man looked at the woman with them, and he thought that the person who owned this woman was just as stupid. Pets are just like owners. Talking about Lurenja made him very angry. Their boss gave him the whole team to catch some fish. But in the end that one person didn't die and even gave him trouble for just being an errant boy. Then the man also left the room and said that fortunately that person now, dividing the supplies is also done. Xia Xiu felt that Jiang Chen was chasing her. Then Jiang Chen was shocked and couldn't believe what Xia Xiu had said. Previously Xia Xiu had doubted Jiang Chen's offer to start this company. But she felt that she had been fooling herself all along. Starting a company for profit, if Jiang Chen had already made over 100 million in profit in half a year, why was he trying to invest his earnings into one of the riskiest tech industries? When Xia Xiu heard herself, she didn't sound like she was just asking a question. She sounded like she was arguing with him. Xia Xiu wondered when Jiang Chen started liking her. Was it maybe from the time of the clothing store? But the truth is that Xia Xiu made Jiang Chen lose his job. Xia Xiu is confused as to why Jiang Chen would do something like this. She didn't want to, and this wouldn't be a reward for her. If Jiang Chen said that this was all the same as the second rich generation, this company only made him a prisoner. Xia Xiu also asked Jiang Chen what price she had to pay to escape from all this. Xia Xiu felt that she had been deceived again. Then suddenly Jiang Chen said 100 million. Jiang Chen said that this was just a little bit of the future market value of the company. He also said that he made a lot of money, but does Jiang Chen look like a stingy person? He said what was the point of keeping all that money in the bank? If the interest rate was only 1 million per year, how long would it take to earn double? Jiang Chen said honestly that he really did it for Xia Xiu. According to Jiang Chen for business geniuses who can set up a company under the hands of the owner's leadership for loyal employees who work tirelessly day and night. But when it comes to 100 million yuan, even if Xiu uses it all on prostitutes, it's enough for a few years. 
Xie Xiu only fell silent at Jiang Chen's words. Jiang Chen felt that this shouldn't be a problem. This year, there shouldn't be many bosses who were kind to their subordinates. Xie Xiu suddenly stood up and Jiang Chen was confused at Xie Xiu's silence. It turns out that Xie Xiu told Jiang Chen to leave her house instead. It's late at night, they have a lot of things to do tomorrow, and don't forget what Xie Xiu has explained to Jiang Chen. Jiang Chen thought, how much pride does this woman actually have? Jiang Chen seemed to really dodge the bullet. The next day Jiang Chen took Aisha to eat at a restaurant. When they got off the plane, they had booked a hotel and Jiang Chen told Aisha to go to class to learn Chinese. Jiang Chen felt that it must be hard for Aisha. And it seemed like the problem of the house had to be solved as quickly as possible. First, Jiang Chen had to send a message to Chia Xiu. Then he would take Aisha to Chinese class. This was supposed to be where Aisha learned Chinese. Aisha and Jiang Chen separated and Jiang Chen will pick up Aisha after the class is over. After that, Jiang Chen went straight to the business district. Together with Xie Xiu, Jiang Chen headed to a commercial bank and industrial bureau. Jiang Chen asked Xie Xiu if she slept well last night, but Xie Xiu didn't want to tell the owner who was loose and irresponsible. Xie Xiu explained their schedule. On Wednesday, they will have a job fair at Shanghai University. Xie Xiu has reserved a place. She hopes Jiang Chen can come. Jiang Chen wants to talk about this matter later. He wants to solve a liquidity problem first. Xie Xiu asked if Jiang Chen was free in the afternoon, and Jiang Chen asked if it was work-related or personal. Then Jiang Xie Xiu said it was something Jiang Chen had already promised her. He would take care of it regarding the house. Jiang Chen came to the future and arrived in a room, and it wasn't a smooth landing. Jiang Chen remembered the last time he went around the basement, the last time he went back and forth carrying things for some Zhou in a hurry. Jiang Chen didn't know what had happened during the time he was gone. When Jiang Chen looked outside, it turned out that there was construction at his house. If it weren't for the village, Jiang Chen wouldn't be able to recognize this as his home. Then Jiang Chen looks for Sun Zhou, but he can't find her, and why is it so quiet in his house? Suddenly Sun Zhou says that Jiang Chen has finally returned. Jiang Chen was shocked that she scared him. Jiang Chen doesn't know if Sun Zhou is there because it's so quiet. Sun Zhou teases Jiang Chen, what is Jiang Chen afraid of is his guilt. This time, it's a woman like what Jiang Chen slept with last night. Jiang Chen asked Sun Jiao since when he was there. Jiang Chen didn't notice. Jiang also asked if Sun Jiao had breakfast or not. And if Sun Jiao wasn't busy, Jiang Chen asked to explain the situation in this place. Sun Jiao looked at Jiang Chen sarcastically. He was annoyed that Jiang Chen was changing the subject. But Sun Jiao was sure he would find her sooner or later. Then Sun Jiao explained what had happened up to this point. It explained about the construction of the house. The outside construction had continued to the waterway for about 200 meters, and they have cleared another three hectares of open space. The plan to build four dormitory buildings and the first floor of the community center has been completed. The outer watchtowers are equipped with machine guns. Sum Zhou took Jiang Chen out for a tour. They would walk and talk. Sum Zhou said that if Yo Yao still hadn't woken up, she would probably still be sleeping until they returned. Jiang Chen can finally breathe a sigh of relief. If Sun Zhou took it seriously, Jiang Chen really wouldn't know how to answer him. Sun Zhou explains that the community center is actually still under construction, so currently there is only a canteen and meeting room. They are reinforcing the defense lines and installing submachine guns. For now we only need to defend against zombies and surviving travelers. After two months, they should be able to replace those with sentry guns. Jiang Chen also looked at the information on the screen. It was his order from the Zhao Chen Wu Weapon Factory. The weapon was equipped with laser, automatic heat seeker. The unit price was 3,000 and the total number was 4 racks. Speaking of the weapons factory, Jiang Chen asked how the trade with the Zhou Group was going. In early August, the trade volume was 100,000 crystals. The materials they exchanged were for the most important construction materials. Coolants, batteries, firearms, special raw materials, steel and other building tools, they left an excess of 2310 crystals. A few days ago, Sun Jiao was dizzy from throwing away excessive potatoes. Now he was talking about 100,000 crystals without blinking an eye. Zhang Chen was pretty sure that Sun Jiao only cared about food. Zhang Chen said that it wasn't bad at all. They didn't need to skimp on base construction, the crystals only mattered when wearing them. Jiang Chen thought that Sun Zhou could only fight and kill. 
It never occurred to Zhang Chen that Sun Zhou was well-suited as a housekeeper. Sun Zhao explained that the group of survivors around noticed and tried to get in touch with them. They were different from the Block 6 area. The suburbs were less dangerous, and the buildings tended to be more perfect, so a smaller number of survivors started living there. Sun Zhao estimated that there were approximately 57 small and large survivor groups surrounding her base. Zhang Chen was giddy that there were that many. He thought back to when he tried to make a little money in Block 6. Zhang Chen was chased by several groups of mercenaries. If these survivors knew about the tens of tons of food in the base, they wouldn't understand the meaning of not killing a chicken for its eggs. When it comes to life and death, all are equal. Although they didn't count the survivors, the reason why the Zhou group didn't dare to push us was also because there was a company supporting them. That company is the Fishbone Food Production Company. If they knew all the food that Zhang Qi had, neither Zhang Chen nor what Zhao Chen Wu would do. According to Sun Zhou, that's why it's important to have precautions in place. For personnel in the headquarters, it is strictly forbidden to open fire or eat outside the canteen. And also clearly refuse other survivors' requests to enter the headquarters. For how to deal with them, Sun Zhou waited for Zhang Chen's decree. Without strength, they would surely be overrun. Zhang Chen also asked about their current combat power. Sun Zhao bought eight virtual reality army training capsules specifically for this, and the result was quite a few people who could use weapons and fight. Zhang Chen was very happy to hear that and wanted to see the training capsule. Sun Zhao showed the bend to Zhang Chen. This capsule was made in 2140. It is thought to be one of the earlier models. It taps into memories to help achieve the highest state, so that the body is perfectly accustomed to the movements during training. Then Zhang Chen added together with genetic medicine. Sun Zhao agreed with Zhang Chen's words. Physical training could depend on genetic medicine. The last order of 50 level D genetic drugs had all been used. Zhang Chen asked Sun Zhao if it could be used to learn other things like languages. Sun Zhao explained that it could be used to learn languages. But he was confused nowadays what was the use of learning languages. Zhang Chen wanted Aisha to use this capsule and the genetic medicine so that Aisha no longer needed to go to language classes. Zhang Chen will create a driver and escort a beautiful woman. And Zhang Chen thought it would be really cool. Zhang Chen had some needs to use it, and he would bring one. Sun Zhao also reminded him that it took one crystal to use it for 10 hours, and Sun Zhao told Zhang Chen to bring some reserve nutrient solution. Zhang Chen was quite happy, because they had armed troops. The other survivors' problems would be easier to solve. Zhang Chen told Sun Zhao to set up a trading post at the entrance of the headquarters. Zhang Chen told Sun Zhao to sell pieces of dried biscuits to the scattered survivors and do an open exchange for crystals. But Sun Zhou was at a loss, what items would they exchange? Sun Zhou really didn't understand if they could buy anything from them that could be used. Crystals, electronic parts, building materials, anything as long as it was usable. Zhang Chen didn't care how much he got. Zhang Chen only needed to make them do a little work for him. Zhang Chen would build trust every time, adding that they wouldn't be able to compete with Zhang Chen. Then Zhang Chen wouldn't have to worry about them not wanting to join us. Sun Zhao also thought that might happen. But these people are not easy to control. They don't have an embedded microchip. Zhang Chen said that Sun Zhao shouldn't worry. Zhang Chen was just adding to their workforce. After all, Sun Zhao didn't expect this first batch of contributors to keep doing this for the rest of their lives. Zhang Chen also reminded Sun Zhao not to forget to pay each person 30 crystals. Zhang Chen couldn't keep thinking of them as volunteers. Sun Zhao laughed happily and approached Zhang Chen. Sun Zhao said it seemed like Zhang Chen didn't have to worry about this, and it seemed like this little lady had misjudged Zhang Chen. With a serious face, Zhang Chen says that this is his home too. Sun Zhao changes the subject and asks what kind of woman Zhang Chen slept with last night. With a panicked look on his face, Zhang Chen wondered how Sun Zhao could come back to this. Is Sun Zhao actually a dog? Sun Zhao asked Zhang Chen if he had anything to say. Then Sun Zhao opened something and put it in a place. Since Zhang Chen didn't answer Sun Zhao's question, Sun Zhao asked for Zhang Chen's body instead. Then Zhang Chen arrived at the research and development lab and saw someone working. The man was so focused on his work that he didn't notice Zhang Chen coming. And on the table are the two cell phones that Zhang Chen is carrying. Zhang Chen said that there was no choice and time was precious. Then the man turned toward Zhang Chen. The man was happy that Zhang Chen had finally returned. 
the man had already shown Sun Jiao several times. He asked him to set it up again and again, before letting Zhang Chen see it. This man really couldn't find any more bugs. Zhang Chen explained that he was very busy and not at the headquarters. Zhang Chen asked how it went. Then the man gave the cell phone to Zhang Chen and told Zhang Chen to check it himself. Zhang Chen opened the cell phone and checked it. It seemed like he kept thinking about this, there shouldn't be any problems. Moreover, the opening screen looks quite high-end, and the frame rate is quite high. 